This is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Expresso. And this is your show this morning because we're going to need you to give us a call on 0839133728. We're talking about your in-laws. Yes. When it comes to getting married, the one thing most people think about until the day of their wedding, well, you only think about your partner, but you don't think of your whole new family. And when it comes to your in-laws, well, the relationship that you have could either make or break your relationship with your partner. Absolutely. So we would love to hear from you guys. Like Alana said, call us 0839133728. But with all the mother-in-law, law jokes out there it's obvious that getting along with your in-laws is not always easy so we decided to hit the streets to find out from some people what the worst thing their mother or father-in-law has ever said or done she uh, passed out at our wedding before the main course and the speeches that was quite shocking but we laugh about it now <laughs> i think we went through a bit of a bad patch and we were on our way overseas and um they didn't pitch up to say goodbye so that was quite hard, especially for my husband. In January, I think it was 2013, um, I asked the dad whether I can actually propose to and whether we can get married. <laughs> so I kind of asked the big question for the, well, to her dad. And he said yes, but with the, saying that, he basically um, gathered everyone around the table and had a big celebration with giving champagne to everyone and announcing the, <laughs> the new son in the family to everyone before I actually asked her because I wanted to ask her only in March of that uh, year. So then she knew about it before, <laughs> before I actually asked her. Oh, the definite spoiler out there. Over eager dad, they say. Well, with us in studio, joining us, our relationship expert, Dr. Basman, better known as Dr. Eve, to chat about and navigate us through this. Dr. Eve, good morning and welcome to the show. <laughs> nice to be here. We're adding on those layers. You have yeah. the family, you have your partner, and then you remember only on the wedding day. Oh dear, in-laws. How common is it that in-laws? I'm going to say, spoil it for people. They start actually before the wedding. Mm. Think about the preparation that goes into a wedding. Mm -hmm. It's like a confusing place for an in-law to be in. I have a little empathy here. Just a little mm. bit of empathy right now because they also want to have a voice. Mm. Yeah. And what is their role? Because when a couple gets married, it means a role redefinition. So they've got to then move away from what we call extended families, which means their parents, their parents, if they do have parents, mm. and begin to form their own new family. So what happens to these other ex extended families and external families? They have to learn boundaries. That's the mm. first rule that has to happen mm. when a couple gets married or gets attached or cohabits together. But oftentimes these boundaries are pretty blurred. And so nobody really knows what their role and responsibilities is. Mm -hmm. And so there may be too much of an attachment that's happening with the one partner to their family, mm -hmm. to their parents or parent, as well as on this side to the family and parent. And that creates an enormous amount of dissent and conflict mm -hmm. in a couple as well as the in-laws. They don't know what their roles are. They don't know their place. It's, it's very difficult. I mean, especially, I mean, you think about getting married as just you and your partner. You're getting married yeah. as the family, but dynamics yeah. change over the years with the mm. addition of kids. Mm. Um, you know, what are some of the major issues that you could think of that would cause issues with in-laws? I think that the in-laws, and maybe, maybe because I'm one, that, that we really don't know what I come again to the roles of what we should be doing. What is our place? So say, for example, a grandchild arrives. Mm. How much voice should that in-law have? How much time should they be involved in with that person? How much uh, influence should they be having? What culture should they be bringing into that family? And unfortunately, when they walk out the door and they think they've had like a really nice visit, that couple are standing and staring each other off because they're now going to go into conflict about whose rules are we going to follow? Is it the voice of my mother or your father that we're going to be following? And really, who determines what goes on in our own family? I could talk about this for, for, for hours. I because Because <laughs> I'm thinking, whose side do you stay with when you draw yes. the line in the sand? Do you mm -hmm. decide about it together? Surely you should lay down some ground rules. And, yeah. and you should do this before the marriage already. Very much. How do you do that yeah, before you get married? The most important thing is I always say to my couples that I work with in my therapy room, if you are not able to form your own family, to see yourselves as a family, you shouldn't be getting married. If you can't cut that umbilical cord, you should not really be getting, you're not ready to. If you cannot have a conversation mm. in which both of you agree, you know what, I like the way that my mother prepares a meal, or I like the way that my father mm. engages with me around sport or around, work. I'm being so traditional, around <laughs> certain activities. If you can't agree on what things you like and dislike about the way that you were raised, 
and say, those things I'm going to leave behind, but these things I really like. I like mm. these things that my mother and father taught me or a caregiver taught me. And those mm. things we're going to bring in, we're going to create a, a value system based on that. But also we have the enormous freedom, and couples really need to know this, enormous freedom to create the kind of relationship rules that they want mm. to have. Bringing in the nice things that they like, things that have worked for them, the values that they have in common, but really creating a family. So you ask, where does the loyalty lie? The loyalty lies with you. Mm. Mm. And that's where a lot of conflict happens with couples. Yeah. Well, definitely a lot to talk about. Our lines are open. 0839133728. If you've got a question about your in-laws, please phone in, ask Dr. E. But we hit the streets to find out from you, what are some of the hardest things that you can think of about adding a family in law? I would say... The norms and traditions, things that, that my wife just accepted as normal, that was completely weird or different for me. Because as a kid, you only have one example of a marriage, and that's your own parents. And not, all, not always right or even normal, but that's your norm. I've got a Russian friend that got married to an American guy. So their backgrounds were completely, and they really struggled. Simple things like... Uh, Brushing your teeth or not in the evening, uh, what you eat. They live in the Karoo and I'm from Joburg, so that was quite a big shock to my system. Um, the small town in the middle of nowhere and then I'm from the big bad city. I think it's like a lot of relationships. You have to start at a point and work on it because initially there's so many different dynamics and yes, yeah, sometimes you like them and sometimes you don't. Um, so I'd say it's a, it's a work in progress. Sure. Well, well, you can give us a call. We're live right now, 0839 If you just tuned in, we're talking about in-laws and the impact that they have on your marriage. In our chair this morning, Dr. Eve, thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you very much. And you spoke yeah. about boundaries a little bit earlier on. Yes. You know, very important to set those, but those boundaries yeah. can get, you know, a little bit blurred along the way. But mm. I think something that I think a lot of people need to deal with is cultural differences. And, mm. I mean, what role does that play in terms of, you know, <laughs> managing your in-laws? There is enormous cultural expectations that happen in each family. And by culture, we don't even have to mean a different culture, like we South African and somebody else is a different culture. Families have different cultures. Mm. So family would have cultures around like eating, table manners, how much time do they spend together? The expectation of time, I find, is a real killer in conflict between mm. couples. Mm. I expect to spend every Sunday with my mother because that's what I've always done. But now I'm cohabiting or living with you or married to you, and you expect me to spend every family Sunday with your family, having pot roast with your family or a bra with your family. What are we going to do? The couple have to be enormously strong, and I come back to my original point that if you are not willing yet or not able yet to have a boundary and to create and prioritise yourselves as a couple, first as mm -hmm. a new family, even with our children, you're really going to struggle. Between sure. the two of you, you need to agree yes. on those boundaries, yes. first of all, which can be very difficult. Yes. Well, we're going to our phone lines this morning, 0839133728. Ken is on the line. You're live on Expresso. What's yes. your question or comment? Yes, basically my question this morning is, how do you start a relationship with your in-laws? I've, I've been married for 14 years. My wife is from Joburg. I'm from the Eastern Cape. Mm. They, they visit when I'm not around. Or I meet them at the funeral, that is her sisters and, and brothers. Mm. Mm. So we basically don't have a relationship at all. Well, uh, you know, the fact that you're phoning in says that you do want to have a relationship with them, which is a really great thing. 14 years is a long time yeah. to be in a family, but also what's going to happen is you're going to feel like completely separate from this family. And it's going to, I don't know, I mean, I'm curious to know, has it impacted on your relationship with your wife? Does she want you to have a more deep relationship with her family? Ken, does she? Yes, it does, but just, it, it's just difficult. What's, a, what's your difficulty? Where do you find that you struggle with this? Uh, uh, an example, she has a brother that I, I thought I was going to be close to when the whole relationship started. But he's, he's very aloof. He doesn't. If I visit there, which once happened, he will just greet and then it disappears. It, mm. it, there's nothing happens. So you and want then to... Okay. You, you, Ken, yeah, thank you so much for your, for your yeah. phone call. Uh, Dr. Yeah. Eve, how can we give him an answer? And, and yeah, wrap he's, that up for he's him, really sure. got to take responsibility. Yeah. You know, people are going to stand off position where, like, I'm not going to do anything if you don't do anything. I would say to you, Ken, reach out. Go and do things. Find out what they, they like mm. culturally, and I don't mean by culture. I mean just what kind of things do you have in common with each other. Invite him over. Open yourself up and invite him, not with your wife, because you're a separate family, but individually on your own. Form a relationship mm. with these people. Very important for you yeah. in terms of your relationship with your wife. 
you must have independent time with your with your in-laws as well. Very yeah. important to do that. Yep. Oh, I've got so much to say about this. <laughs> can I mm. love my daughter-in-law? That's all I can say. <laughs> well, well, we're going to be continuing your dis the discussion, discussion around yeah. family laws a little bit later on this morning. But the number once again, oh eight three nine one three three seven two eight. Give us a shot, Graham. It's over to you.